I want to thank everyone today for joining me on this presentation. Uh, just to let you know a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Phillips. I'm from Houston, Texas. Uh, we operate the Advice Show TV YouTube channel. Uh, our company's name is Advice Show Media. We also operate other ch uh, YouTube channels as well. Uh, we have the main one we just discussed is news and social commentary. Uh, we actually have a comedy channel, believe it or not. Uh, it's called Ratchet Video Weekly. Some people may have seen it, some people may not. And then we have another channel called Advice Show Media. That one is for our three-hour radio show, which is hosted by myself and two other co-hosts. And we offer social commentary on other uh, videos on that channel as well. We have a website, AdviceShow.com. We have an app, Advice Show Media, which is on iTunes, Google Play, and Amazon. You can download that if you would like. Now, so we have been working pretty hard since about 2012. Our channel really started to slowly grow, but we started back in 2009. Now, our current statistics on our main channel, which is the Advice Show TV, uh, we have 187 million channel views on our channel as of right now and 488,000 uh, subscribers. Uh, when we hit about 100,000 subscribers, uh, we had got this from YouTube. I don't know if you guys can see this or not. It's the silver play button from YouTube. We're working on the next one, which would be a million. And it's supposed to be a huge gold play button from YouTube. So it's pretty good to get a little recognition for what you are doing. Now, there are people, and some of you may know, been having channels for years and came and gone to 5,000 subscribers. So I'll try to talk to you guys a little bit about what has helped me to do that. Uh, what has made me very passionate about what I do. So how I started my channel originally um, was back in 2009. Um, I watched a brother. He was riding around talking about issues within the black community, and I thought, wow, that's very interesting. Uh, so I watched the whole weekend. I was off of work. It was raining real bad. It wasn't going nowhere. So about after watching you know, a few of his videos over the weekend, I messaged the brother. I told him, I like what you did. Um, how did you get into that? And so he told me, you know what, you can do it too, Just, you know, post videos. So I got my first little camera, about $100. And I started posting videos. So I was just doing it for a while, just in my bathroom, making videos uh, in a just little backdrop. And that was fine. And then eventually my wife was like, you know, maybe you can take this hobby and make it possibly into some sort of business. And, you know, one thing Magic Johnson has stated, and I like the statement, he said, if you could find something that you love and create it into a business, it won't feel like you're working. And that's how it feels for me. I could post videos all day, half the night, do radio shows. It doesn't bother me because I enjoy what I do because it started off as a hobby. I love to talk about different issues in the community, politics. I love to challenge social issues. Uh, that's my favorite thing to do, especially the topics of racism, white supremacy, and all these other things that affect our community. And when I know I'm getting to the white supremacists and what I'm speaking about, I, I get even more ecstatic and I want to keep pressing harder and harder and harder. When they're threatening you, talking about they want to beat you up and do you something, that just makes me smile every single day. So, you know, one day, you know, we focus more on independent media. I didn't see a lot of black independent media out there. You know, you see your CNNs, and that's fine, but CNN is not black-owned. You see Fox News Channel, we definitely know that's not black-owned, and they have, an, you know, a grudge against us within the black community, and anyone out there that can spit half-true, straight-up lies about us, uh, they're going to do it on Fox News Channel. And unfortunately, most people like to be told what to think instead of thinking for themselves. And a lot of people are intellectually lazy. They do not want to research anything for themselves. They want to just have everything put on a silver platter in life. Not everybody's going to give you everything. And when people are giving you something, it may not be exactly what you need at the time period. So we don't have many black-owned stations. Even when you're talking about, well, we got BET. No, we don't have BET. BET was sold by Bob Johnson to Viacom. So BET is owned by white folks. A lot of people don't know that. Centric is owned by white folks. Uh, what's the other one? Um, I think TV One is by the only, I think, mostly black-owned um, station. I think, I think it's kind of half and half. Uh, I think between Kathy Hughes and I think NBC Universal or something like that. Uh, but most of these quote-unquote black things that we have isn't owned by black folks, and that's the problem. So we live in a time period that we can do for ourselves a whole lot more. I push doing for self. 
I don't believe begging people for things all the time. Um, we need to get out there and create our own stories. We need to report things on what we see because think about it. When you look at CNN, MSNBC, or whatever, they report something, and it's not going to be how maybe you or I would look at it and report it because we come from the black community. We understand the hood. We know the mentality. We know how black people move and operate for the most part. So why can't we speak on these things? But you can look at other journalists like Don Lemon is one of them, um, or other blacks that you may see on these major networks. They really can't say how they feel. And well, a lot of people in this country are actually tired of the mainstream media. They love independent media more because it's regular people giving their opinions about the news, and they don't have to worry about pandering to the corporate sponsors. So as we work hard as much as we can to bring our programming and interviews and radio shows, it's just a few things that I have really tried to implement to make that successful. And the first thing that I wanted to speak about is work ethic. You know, you're in the class right now, and that's a great thing. But your professor really can't teach you work ethic. That's on you. Um, if you think that you're going to be successful, just, uh, okay, I'm going to work 9 to 5, and that's just it then you're not really going to be a whole lot successful. Most people, if you look at your, your Warren Buffetts, um, you look at the even the crazy Donald Trump of all people, a lot of yeah, I know, right? A lot of times you're working a lot more than you're resting. Sometimes I only may work about, shoot, 22 to 23 hours at a time. But sometimes I may only get three or four hours of sleep at times when I got things going on. But that's when you're trying to work. You have to work constantly. It's no stopping. It's no resting. It's like they say, if you got a million dollar dream, you can't have a minimum wage work ethic. You got to work hard and forever what you want in life. And I use this formula like this. Less work equals less money. More work equals more money. But also outside of that, you must work smart. You can't work hard. Working hard don't really get you anywhere. Working smart will get you a lot of places. So work ethic is very, very important, and I hope a lot of you have that work ethic in you. No one should have to tell you to turn in your papers in class. No somebody should tell you you have to wake up. Nobody should tell you anything because you say, okay, this is what I got to do because it's part of my work ethic. Next thing I focus on is uh, integrity. Integrity is a big thing for me because people only respect you based off of your integrity. And I had a recent story that these three girls put out a story that said the 12 white folks jumped them on a bus out of the University of Albany. And I heard that story, and based on history, you know a lot of that stuff has happened in the past. We have been terrorized by savages uh, doing this stuff to us for a long time. So when I made my video, I stated things based off of historical references and even current things that we just seen from 2015. Now, people are passing it to me. Hey, Philip, I think they lied. Hey, listen, check this link out. Look at this video. And I put a comment. I say, you know what? If they lied, I'm going in on them. Now, who wants to be wrong? Especially the way I go in on people. Who want to be wrong? Well, I was wrong on that because... That story was corrected, even though I waited a few days, the, the university president put out a statement say this would happen, the local media put this out and say this would happen, so it was a, I got it from a bunch of sources, it's not like I just ran with it, but the fact is, it was wrong. Now, I could have did one or two things, I could have just deleted that video, left it alone, and act like I ne it never happened, or I can post an update, in which I did, I posted an update, and I said, no, they lied. And I had to go in on them for lying because when you lie like that, it makes it hard on a person who's actually having some racial issues, especially you know how it is with black people, which is very unfair. One black person represents the whole group. That's the biggest thing of racism I've ever seen in my life is when that happens. Just because what one of you do shouldn't affect me, but that's the way it is in this country. So you got to have integrity in whatever you do, and we will correct our stories, or if we say something that's wrong, we'll come back and say, hey, listen, this was wrong, this was right, and people can only do nothing but respect you at that point. Um, next thing we have to do is stay humble and not act in Hollywood. There are some people that barely get something. And I'll give you an example. They may get a few uh, followers on Instagram or YouTube or Facebook, and you can't touch them. They, they, they went to 5,000, 10,000 now and act like they're a celebrity. Like, who are you? Nobody cares at the end of the day. 
behind some social media numbers. And I, I don't understand why people think there's so much. I know people who have less subscribers than I have, way less. And they think they just, the thing, okay, well, you're only good at your last video. That's how it goes. Nobody cares about those numbers at the end of the day. You just keep working hard. Now, your numbers may catapult you to certain things, may give you certain opportunities, but those numbers don't define you. It's about who you are. And more people appreciate when you stay humble and, and want to you know, work with you instead of you popping your collar, acting like you're somebody, and acting like your poop don't stink. No, don't, don't act that way. Always just stay humble with people. Um, another thing that we focus on is facts defeat opinion. You know, there's a lot of people that got opinions for everything, but is it based in facts? And once you bring the facts to people, if it doesn't line up with the opinion, they got to be quiet. So when we do our commentaries, we try to base it in facts, and then we'll speak about it from there. Just recently, we had a video we put out the FBI statistics on crime. And a lot of the racists would love to say, well, black people commit all the crimes. Well, according to the FBI numbers, we don't. Um, actually, white folks are arrested a lot more than us. Now, they're talking about the murder rate. Well, you blacks have a 51% murder rate. That's true. We talk about a 46% murder rate. But they don't. They act like they got a 2% anyway. So I told them, I said, what about your rape uh, rate? How about that? You got a 69% rape rate versus blacks have a 29%, but you don't talk about that. I said, I bet if it was black people, you wouldn't stop screaming about black men raping everybody. But see, these are things that you got to, you know, look into with facts to combat these uh, things that these people are saying. Because your Fox News channels of the world is going to say there's a war on police, that blacks are the most violent. But yet, these, they know these statistics are out there, but they bank on people not going to research them. So always root everything that you're doing in facts. And that will keep you out of a whole lot of uh, issues and trouble. Professionalism. Um, one thing we try to do is try to do it very professional. And as black people... A lot of times we think not being professional is the way to go. You know, you go to some, let's say, restaurants, there's a black-owned restaurant, and they don't want to greet you like you may go to some of the white ones, uh, you know, and, and you don't get the same level of service or the customer service could be a little less and all this other stuff. That's why some people say, well, I don't want to go. That's the main reason I don't go to black restaurants, which we should call our people on the carpet and tell them you need to be a little bit more professional. So everything that we do here. We try to be professional as possible. Um, when I first started doing my videos, I wasn't wearing none of this. I was wearing just a T-shirt and just ride down with it. But as I focused more on professionalism, um, we then we started to eventually put on a suit and tie, which is fine. I don't have no problem wearing a suit and tie. I like doing that. Uh, we started to focus more on sound. Um, that's why we're using certain microphones, certain backdrops. And it, it's things that we can do a whole lot more of. But it costs money, but we're trying to work with it. We're trying to work with it. So professionalism is the key because your competitors, are, a lot of times they are extremely professional. And as black people, you know that we got to be 10 times smarter, 10 times more sharp than they can ever be due to the society that we uh, live in. Um, keep up with the best people in your field. Now, whoever is a top person, look at them and say, what are they doing to be at that position? Like, are they working harder than you? Or do they uh, speak better than you for some reason? Are you need to work on your public speaking? Um, do they have a better team who research? Or whatever it may be, you just look at what they're doing and just see if you can implement what they're doing to what you're doing. There's nothing wrong with that to look at the top of your field and say, Let's, well, maybe their work ethic is better. So let me try to see if I can take that, that model and work a little harder. Um, and there's, I think whether you're playing sports, journalism, uh, one young man said he want to do the radio. Look at the, whoever the top guy, right? Okay, Charlemagne. Charlemagne is pretty popular in radio. Look at what Charlemagne's doing. Maybe you can see something that you're not doing. And maybe you could, I'm not saying not to mimic his personality or nothing. I'm not saying to take nobody's personality. But maybe something they do in their work ethic. Um, the next one is network with other people. Sometimes you got to network with other people. You can't do everything to yourself. And that's called, you know, that's also staying humble. Talk with everybody. Um, you know, see what relationships you can garner because that's part of growing your team and growing your company. 
um, staying on top of trending stories and topics is something I focus a lot on. I have many apps on my phone, even Fox News Channel. And I don't like Fox News Channel, but I still got to keep up with the conservative media to stay on top of the stories. Now, I have a you know a friend of mine. She's into celebrity gossip. She does very well on YouTube um, as well with that. And she has to stay on top of the stories. And sometimes you have to know when to post and when not to based upon um, – the topic and what's trending. Now, for us, we have to look at Facebook to see what's trending. We have to look at Twitter, what's trending. We have to look at Google Trends, or just with people emailing us. So we constantly have to stay on top of what we are doing. Um, internet trolls. I know some of you love internet trolls. Have you had any experience with internet trolls, anybody? Okay. Well, internet, yeah, the internet trolls will get worse the, the bigger you get. Uh, the best way to handle internet trolls, I tell a lot of people, don't respond to them and block them. If someone, at least on YouTube, start making videos towards you, don't respond to it. Leave it alone because the internet trolls can distract you off of what you're doing. Um, I learned a whole lot of things by trial and error. All the stuff I'm doing, I don't really have a degree for. I didn't go to school for journalism. I didn't go to school for communications. I learned everything, trial and error, researching uh, microphones, researching sound, researching cameras. Um, I, my degree is in actually in theology, believe it or not. So I've learned more about public speaking and things like that through theology, but everything else has been researched. So you can expand your horizons outside of your degree if you just do a little research into it. And, you know, last but least, about investing your money. Let's say you got your business going and money coming in. A lot of times, see, for a year, I turn the money right back into the business. And instead of going out there buying shoes, buying clothes, for what? Who are you impressing at the end of the day? I want to build something that it can last, the money keep rolling in. And then if I want to go buy shoes, clothes, expensive stuff, I can do that. So you have to invest into your business. It, it don't matter if you got money coming in and you eating beans and rice. Eat the beans and rice a little while just so you can invest into your business, buy your stuff, buy your equipment, whatever, pay your people. And then once the money will start rolling in, then you can enjoy the fruit of your labor. But these are the things that we have focused on to be successful. We're definitely trying to grow a lot more. we bringing in other people into the platform. Um, like I said, we networked with uh, a local activist here, uh, Derek Muhammad of uh, the, Nat the Nation of Islam. He comes in and makes comments here. Um, we talk to other Christian people. Uh, we talk to anybody to try to come in and, and share. And cause we, Our future plan is more so to be a network. And hopefully we'll be on television one day. That's that's the thing. But we're never going to change our platform. And we're going to be 100% unapologetically black the whole time. So that's our future plans. Now, if anyone would be interested, which young, young sister in the back has stated that uh, a possibility of internship, like I said, the uh, email that you can do that with is the advice show at gmail.com. That's T H E A D V I S E S H O W at gmail.com. And once we would get that, I would forward it to my business manager and he would contact you from there and let you know how that can be done so you can possibly get some college credit uh, if you need that. So that's my presentation. If anyone has questions, I'm definitely willing to answer them. That's uh, internet troll. Internet troll is a person that comes to your comment section and say you're ugly, you're fat, you're stupid. Uh, I know your mama. She look like this. You know, them kind of people. Internet troll. Can you please respell your email? I wasn't able to hear it. I couldn't make out what she said. She wants you to repeat the email, but somebody in the background has. Okay, the email is the advice show at gmail dot com. And what do you want us to send directly for the possible internship? Um, well, if whatever services that you have that you could possibly offer internship, because we don't know if it's graphic design. Um, if it's, you know, you're in journalism, you, you're good at doing research for news stories, whatever you could possibly offer, um, that's definitely what we're looking for because, um, shoot, we have so much going on, you know, interviews with people and uh, news stories, going out to cover stories. So if I could have maybe somebody come in to help me do thumbnails for the videos, that helps. That, that helps a lot because uh, the thumbnails take time. 
So you basically want us to send you like a mini portfolio of our work to show our talents and what we have to offer, basically, in a nutshell. There you go. There you go. All right, that's all. Two questions? All right. Where are you stationed? Where is you guys' show syndicated out of? And where are you, guys, where are you stationed at? Well, I'm not syndicated, but I'm on the internet. Um, no, are we out of Houston? Okay. All right, everybody, ask all the questions. All right, all right. Bill. Yes, sir. All right, um, I appreciate everything. Um, I guess the ones interested will be um, contacting you 